Who knows what may come next? Hello. G'day, Wayne. It's uh, Robbie from Triple J in Australia. Hey, Robbie. It's good to talk to you. It's lovely to talk to you as well. Where, where do we find you? You at home or are I you... I am... I am sitting on my back porch in Oklahoma City, and it's been brutally hot here all week long. Yeah. And just this afternoon, one of these crazy Midwestern tornado storms came through and dropped the temperature by 20 degrees. So it's it's actually a reasonably pleasant summer mm. evening on my back porch here. It sounds like a very nice place to be, Mr. Coyne. You're making me envious. It is. I mean, yeah. for me it is, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I guess you mentioned the storm, but for you it's probably a little bit of the, uh, the calm before the storm if you're at home because... Obviously, you're about to, uh, to go into overdrive for the Flaming Lips. Well, I have to say, for me, this getting ready was, with getting ready, we're making not just getting ready to go out on a, on a tour, not a giant tour, but enough tour to stress out about, but making the record and doing all these things that lead up to it. I have to say, the minute our tour starts, I'm completely free. Is that right? Yeah, because, I mean, there's nothing I can do then. I've, all, I've set it all into motion, you know. To me, I do take this commitment of playing to an audience when I'm asking them to pay money, and sometimes it's a lot of money to see the mm. Flaming Lips and give us their time and their energy and all that, that once I say we're playing a show, it's like, that is all I'll do that day. You know, I don't have to do 20 things, because I know it's like, look, I'm here to play this show, and I'm not, I'm not doing anything else, you mm. know. So to me, that's a great relief, because when I'm here at the house, I mean... I, did, I forgot I was doing these interviews. I mean, you're the last one, but the first guy was like, hey, where's Wayne? I was like, oh, yeah, I forgot we we're doing these because yeah. I'm just doing 100 things at once to get ready. But once we're playing, it's, to me, it's all very simple. It's like, oh, well, we'll go out there and play to these people. That's all we have to do. It's, um, it's wonderful. When you say it's all that you have to do, though, without blowing too much wind up your bum, the Flaming Lips are one of those extraordinary live experiences. I saw you at the Big Day Out a few years ago when you were last in Australia, and it, it was, yeah, the, it was those were great. Yeah, yeah, those were really great. Yeah. Hugely memorable experiences, and I, I have read since that uh, you come off stage and almost collapse afterwards as well. That you know you, you don't even realise you're doing yourself personal injuries or, or these sorts of things. Is that the philosophy you have, though? Is that that sense of personal commitment to to the live show above everything else? Well. Yeah, I mean, I know it, I really take it to heart that, I mean, with, uh, with the, the Flaming Lips audience, and that's not just because they like the Flaming Lips, a lot of people that like Flaming Lips like a lot of music, and they, I take it, uh, you know, as serious as you could take that. I mean, because yeah. I, I, I'm in that moment as well. You know, when we get to the end of our set sometimes, and we're singing, do you realize, and I can see that it's affecting people. I mean, it affects us as well, and we walk away thinking, gosh, you know, I don't know what happens, but... There's, a, there's an exchange of something that's like love, and there's this energy, and there's this, this thing when you're playing music that means that it was something to people right. um, that really lifts us into this other dimension that we know is temporary. But, you know, if we really try hard, we'll get there together, and we'll walk away from this thing saying, fuck, I'm, I'm glad I'm alive, and I'm glad I have these friends, and I'm glad we had this experience. And to me, that's really worth going for, because it's hard to make it all... It happened all the time. It, I love, there's so many calamities that can go wrong, whether it's the weather or you get diarrhea or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> you know, whatever. There's a lot of things that can <laughs> conspire to make it not great. And I, the same things are happening to the audience. You know, yeah. there's a lot of things that can happen, you know, to make it not a great night. So, and plus, I've, re- I've done this for a long time, and I know I wouldn't say I'm going to play a show if I wasn't, you know, if I wasn't ready to say, I'm going to give that everything I got to make that good. But, you know, honestly, we run, in our lives, we run into people all the time who do that. I mean, when I get on an airplane, I'm assuming that the fucking pilot is giving me his full attention. You hope so anyway, don't you? Yeah, I mean... Although it's easier easier to tell when you're not than when the pilot is, uh, unless it's going disastrously wrong. Well, I, well, you, you, I mean, you did, you wouldn't get on the plane if you assumed that he wasn't. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or, or when you go to the doctor and he's going to shove his hand up your ass, you assume he knows what he's doing. You know? I mean, in other spheres of there's a bit of a theme, there's a bit of a theme emerging. <laughs> I'm just saying you would expect that people know what they're doing and they're prepared yeah. to do their job. You know, and so. I, I am the same way. It's sort of like, mm. yeah, if you come to see the Flaming Lips, we are gonna, we are prepared, and we're gonna work as hard as we can. Um, and it, and it, and, and 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 of course, it's about music, and there's spontaneity, mm. and there's 
there's special moments and all that. But, but yeah, I mean, I, but I understand. I, I think all those are great compliments. I don't think they would apply to all bands. You know, no, they but, de- no, they definitely don't, Wayne. I can, I, from a, a, a music goer who sees a lot of bands, I can assure you that. Look, we've got Wayne Coyne on the line uh, from his home in Oklahoma. Uh, the Flaming Lips, of course, coming to Australia very, very soon. And uh, we're going to give you the chance to get up on stage with Wayne in a fairly unusual um, scenario, which is very, very uh, uh, <laughs> privileged situation and, uh, and very kind of the Flaming Lips. Let's take a listen to uh, a track from the, the new double album, I believe, Embryonic. We've got, uh, we, we don't have the full album here with us, but we've got a couple of tracks to choose from. There's Silver Trembling Hands, which uh, you would have heard on the radio here, or there's also, I noticed here, Convinced of the Hex. Uh, would you like to choose for us, Wayne? Well, I think both of those are great. I mean, for me, my favourite at the moment that I, I mean, we'll be playing the Convinced of the Hex and the Silver Trembling Hands when we come down there, because we've been rehearsing those and those sound really great. Good. But I, 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 we really are in love with the uh, Convinced of the Hex. And okay, let's play that. To tell you the truth, I played it just about 20, 20 minutes before the interview started, so it's, it's fresh in my mind even as we speak. <laughs> okay, so, yeah. here it is. Okay. Flaming Lips on Triple J. Yes, on Triple J, the Flaming Lips and the well, one of the, the very fine minds behind that. Convinced of the Hex, the name of that song from the Flaming Lips, Wayne Coyne from the band on the phone from Oklahoma and uh, he's going to be in Australia very, very soon. We are very excited. I, I, I believe you've just confirmed that you are going to come into the studio and do Like a Version for us at Triple J as well. I don't know if you've been told about that yet. No, it's, it's not Like a, ver- a Virgin, it's, it's, um, it's Borderline. Oh, well, I mean, Like a Version is the segment that we do where you come in and do a cover for us. So, oh, I see. I thought you'd see. We were, yeah, I, thought we were, I think we're scheduled to do Madonna's Borderline. Oh, right. Like a, <laughs> that's yeah, a great coincidence. Like a no, no, that's and, a- and, 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 <laughs> well, since we've done this Madonna song, I run into people all the time who say, you guys are doing Like a Virgin. I'm like, no, we're not. We're doing Borderline. <laughs> borderline is a ridiculous song for a guy who's 50 years old to sing anyway. I never realized what the song was about. It would be even more absurd for a guy who's almost 50 years old to sing Like a Virgin. <laughs> like, that would almost be kind of taken right wrong the other way, <laughs> wouldn't it, you know? But, I mean, honestly, when we started to do Borderline, I know this sounds stupid, but I never considered, really, what Madonna was singing about. Mm. What is she singing about in it? Well, she's singing about her current love, her current sex partner not being able to bring her to full mm. orgasm, that she's just simply sitting on <laughs> on the borderline, it's, yeah, right? It's... And she's, she's kind of aggravated about that, that he can't bring her to full orgasmic climax mm. and so I don't really didn't know or, or had given it any thought as to what the song was about and when I was doing the vocal take of this you know Dave Fridman our producer guy he pointed out that I wasn't singing the words exactly right and I was like well I don't know what they mean anyways like what do you what do you mean you don't know what it means this is <laughs> and then I and then I really felt and I, I still do I, I was really kind of embarrassed I was like oh my god I feel like I'm retarded singing a song like this but I think it makes it a, a lot better <laughs> um, and uh, more absurd for sure you very kindly have uh, allowed a few Triple J listeners to jump up on stage in your animal outfits last time you were in Australia you had the, the big plushy outfits uh, this time I believe for this tour is it insects that we're looking at we're going to try now I ordered these from a Chinese manufacturer about 10 days ago, and they've not showed up yet, so right. we'll see. But we'll have some, some version of either, it'll be either geckos or some strange snow maiden. Does that sound, that sounds exotic. She's <laughs> got like sounds- white and she's got the fur and horns on her head, um, something like that. So you either be a gecko or a... A, a horned maiden. Either like e- either way, it sounds particularly yeah. inviting. Hey, Wayne, yeah. I, I did want to ask you, I've only got you briefly, but the, the new record, it's a, it's a double album from what I've read, and you've got uh, you've got a couple of guests on it. One I did want to ask you about was one that everybody knows, and that's Karen O, who does a, a cameo via the telephone. Is that right? Well, she actually does a couple things. We, we had this song, uh, the song is called Watching the Planets. I forget the titles because, you, you know, you make up titles yeah. later. Um, we had this song that I sort of felt like sounded like something that she was, would sing anyway. And so it occurred to me, I was like, I should just get her to sing on this. And we sent her the song, and she liked it. And we just organized a day when she, because she was on tour, and we just organized a day when she was going to be at the hotel. And she said, because I said, I think you could just call me on the phone and do it. And she said, you know, I wouldn't do it unless I could do it on the phone. And so how perfect <laughs> was that? So, and, and, she, and she is an utter professional, and she really gave it everything that she had. It only took about an hour to do it, and it was quite a few takes, but she was, she was wonderful. I mean, and I couldn't believe the strange squawking, screaming 
um, joyful stuff that was coming out of the other end of the telephone. Why, why did you want to use the phone, Wayne? I mean, with the way that you can record these days, um, it really is, fidelity-wise, it's fine. It, I mean, I think people would think that, oh, it must not be high fine enough, but there's, especially working up at Dave Fridman's studio in New York, I mean, he can do anything. It made it simple because we had to do it in a kind of timely fashion, and sometimes it's very awkward for artists to have to sit there and arrive at a time when they meet and they sit there and have dinner and they have to face each other. Mm. I mean, we do things all the time now where we're just simply using computers back and forth. We don't really have to sit there and work out our schedules. And I knew when I talked to her that she was on tour and I didn't want her to stop what she's doing and come to New York. And I told her right away, it's like, you know, I can see your schedule, you know, online. I can see what days you have off. Do you want to do it on one of those days? And she said, well, sure, let's just do it. And then it really is just she's just sitting in her hotel mm. we're sitting in our studio and it's so simple and and as far as the sound sound quality no one would ever know or guess and a lot of things we do sound like they could be over the telephone anyway i, look, I love the sound of the you're in oklahoma we're here in australia can you just give us a little tiny bit of uh, of the sound of oklahoma just give us a few seconds in the background is there anything going on there there is actually a storm happening right now is and it? there has been little bursts of this low rumble thunder that's I, I, left over. I think I heard of it just before, just a moment ago. You hear it? <laughs> yeah, there was there were some um, some tornadoes so at five about five thirty this afternoon. Some real tornadoes with real hail knocking down real power lines. Wow. Um, Came through, yeah. Hey, uh, Wayne, they're going to wrap us up, but listen, we're, we're so excited about having you in the country in a couple of weeks' time. We're very excited about having you to come into the Triple J studios as well. And, uh, of course, we are going to give people a chance to get up on stage and, uh, and play with you guys uh, at yeah, the, yeah. both the Sydney yeah. and the Melbourne shows. Thanks so much, man. It's always a, a, a real inspiration and pleasure to chat to you. It's really fantastic. Well, we'll see you, we'll see you when we get down there. Bye, Marie, get on Triple J.